Good evening, everyone. I'm Yi Xiaozhang. The paper I present today is Performance Net Score to Audio Music Generation with Multi Band Convolutional Residual Network by Brian Yiwang and Yi Xuan Yang from Examia Sinica, Taiwan. As we know, Yang's group has done a lot of amazing work in AI music, such as MIDI Net in 2017 and Pop Mute Transformer in 2021. This paper was published in AAAI 2019. First, I have prepared a too long done read version of this paper for you. If you can understand the essence of this paper through this page, then I'm glad to say that you can save the next 15 minutes of a precious time. The purpose of this paper is that, given a music score, in this paper only one instrument is considered. The model is required to synthesize a corresponding musical audio, as an AI performer does. The core idea of this paper is to build an end-to-end -end model that allows a mapping relationship between the score and the audio without the need to design a large number of parameters such as in traditional audio parameterization approaches. Experiments have indeed proven that the model performs better than traditional parametric synthesis, even including Logic Pro. Although this model is later surpassed by more neural models such as MIDI DSP, but that is not a known story. Let's start from the beginning to explain this paper. A music performance is a musician's free interpretation of score, and we can say that even for the same score, there are a sense of sick differences in performances of different musicians. In general, all performance audio have great deal more acoustic details compared to the score itself. Some traditional methods can model the instrument to restore these details. This, this method performs better on pianos but still do not simulate string instruments such as violins, cellos well enough. Therefore, the authors try to solve this problem with deep learning by building an end-to-end -end mapping from the score to the audio. This is like translating a sketch into a high-resolution high, um, high image, uh, which the neural network needs to automatically add a lot of details in the procession. The complete score to audio generation process is divided into three steps. In the first step, a piano roll matrix is input to the co control net to get a draft of the spectrogram. In the second step, the draft is input to the texture net to add details such as overtones to generate the final spectrogram. And in the third step, the Grimfling algorithm is used to estimate the phase of the spectrogram and restore the spectrum back into the waveform. In the next few pages, I will describe the model details. Formally, the model takes as input a matrix length T and height N, where N represents the MIDI pitches in 108 to 28 dimensions. The model outputs a corresponding spectrogram, also of length T, and of height number of beams, in this case, 1025. The authors consider the module control net as an image translation task and use a five-layer UNET as the implementation of control net, as shown in the figures on the right. UNET was first proposed for medical image segmentation and contains a progressively bending encoder and a progressively compressing decoder. The encoder and decoder are not symmetric because the dimensional pinana row and spectrum are not equal. The encoder concept con contains on one deconvolution layers along the time axis. Each layer augments the feature map size by twice the size of the previous layer, and the height of the final feature map is expanded from n dimensions to 4096 dimensions. The ink decoder compresses 4029 experiments back to the number of beings of spectrum F and stop the compression when the, when the dimension is reduced to f dimensions. They also found that the control net has difficulty in learning information of the onset and offset of nodes, so 
they add an additional own set of sets encoder to explicitly convey node position information to the decoder. This draft spectrogram is then sent to the texture net for additional details. The author believes that a bottleneck of control nets is that the same convolution filters are used for different interfrequency bins. So in texture net, the model divides the feature map into multiple bands, enriching the detail from sketch to spectrogram, layer by layer. And finally, outputting to the final spectrogram, we can see from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, and then output a spectrogram. They also use MusingNet datasets for their experiments, a dataset containing over 34 hours of chamber music in both MIDI file and audio file formats. Since the traditional method has been well performed on piano, they also use data from other three instruments, violin, cello, and flute, for training. They also preprocess the data by splitting the audio and MIDI data into chunks of 5 second lengths, with the overlap between two adjacent chunks between 4 seconds, 4.5 seconds, and 4.75 seconds for the three instruments, respectively as a data augmentation to alleviate the severe shortage of datasets. They also split the dataset into a training set and a validation set in a ratio of 8 to 2. There is no test dataset. The presence of datasets, in fact, is necessary from a machine learning perspective because the authors can tune the model by observing the performance of the validation set, but usually to a gain, the test dataset is prohibited. This is to prevent the performance of the model from appearing inflated. The authors conducted a subjective experiment to evaluate the model performance in audio synthesis, and a total of 156 people participated in the experiment. They also divided the evaluation into two rounds, since the two synthesizers and the service line used different data and scores. The experiment proved that the model proposed in this paper exceeds the synthesizer in some aspects, while the timbre and audio quality are still lacking. Well, the model exceeds the WebNet, the WebNet based baseline in all metrics. In conclusion, this paper proposed a new approach to score to audio synthesis by directly modeling an end to end mapping of score to music audio let the model bypassing the traditional automatic parameterization methods. This model suffers from several drawbacks. The first is that the model does not perform very well in terms of time burn and audio quality, which can be improved by changing and extending the model architecture. This paper still lacks a qualifiable and objective metrics and the model only considers a single instrument case, while multiple instruments are more common in the real world. And the model cannot control the personality of the synthesis process, while um, a real AI performance can have its personality. These problems are being addressed by subsequent studies, uh, uh, for example, MIDI DDSP, uh, in at uh, ECLEO 2022 models MIDI to audio synthesis of multi multiple instrument music in a hierarchical way, allowing users to control notes and the performance of styles separately. And Deep Performo is a further improvement in metrics such as piece accuracy and sample fidelity. That's all. Thank you.